Welcome to Ski Hist Provincial Park. We're going to show you around today. First, we'll visit the day use area, then head up the hill and show you the camping sites. Next, we'll go for a hike on the Upper Loop Trail. Finally, we'll check out the iconic Frog Rock just up the road on the Nicola River. We're just down here at the day use area at Ski Hist. So just in the bottom corner here, they have a wildlife viewing calendar. So that's really helpful so that you know kind of what you'll get to see when you're here. Um, we're in June right now. So our options are rainbow trout, bighorn sheep, which we saw on the way here actually, mule deer, which we've seen a little bit of as well, coyotes here. They also have rattlesnakes. So that's kind of really interesting. It's called the Pacific rattlesnake. I've never seen one. I kind of hope to never see one. And then this is where it gets a little bit comical. So stone flies, catus flies, mayflies. Here's a pro tip for the day use area. Just walk from the pavement path where Mel is, up this little dirt path to where I am, and it opens up and you can see the entire valley and the river and everything, and it's beautiful. The day use area has some picnic tables and washrooms and not a whole lot else. So good for just like maybe a picnic stop. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of creatures that make that tickety tickety sound. I think they're grasshoppers, but we don't know. So if you know what they are, let us know in the comments. So we found a tree that had all those clicking noises kind of low down to us. And we found the insect that we think is making it. It looks like maybe a mayfly or some kind of fly. So even though we made fun of the wildlife <laughs> sign at the beginning. Flies. <laughs> now we are wildlife viewing of flies. And it's actually kind of neat because they're pretty big. Yeah. Yeah, they're huge. Like, look at that one right there. Yeah. He's got like a good inch long and they're wide. Like he's kind of got a cute little face. Ew. It's their old exoskeleton. I thought it was a bug, but then uh, when you look at it head on, it's like split. <laughs> and, like look like what we just saw. Yeah, I know. So Mel is diligently looking up the different types of flies to see what type of fly we actually saw. I don't know. I want to say it's a mayfly, but looking at the pictures on Google, looks a little different. So yeah. if you can identify this fly, let us know in the comments. When you first come up the hill, there's a sign here that tells you all of the park rules after 6 p.m. you self-register here at this sign. Otherwise, the camp host will um, come around. So we've had a look at all 53 or so sites. They're all really nice. When I first saw this park on a map, I thought that it was kind of small and that things would be really close together, but they're actually really Not well. The case. Yeah, they're really well spaced out yep. and just beautiful. Everything's on a hillside, so each one kind of has a little bit of a view. You'll get your exercise walking up the hill. A few of the sites down, like when you're first coming in along the right side, are specifically just for tents because it's got like a little bit of a pull off for um, your vehicle, but then some stairs and a sunken um, tent pad. Those first levels, you can hear a little bit more of the highway. It's not like a huge amount. It's not like when we were at Marble Canyon where you're like right on the road. We're pretty high up, so you can hear it a little bit, but the further up the hill you go, the less you'll hear it. We're pretty much at the top and yeah. we can't hear any can't road hear the noise. Traffic at all. This campground is definitely big rig friendly. Lots of fifth yeah. wheels we've seen. Um, big motor home, a big class A up where we are. And of course there's no hookups, no water, no electricity, so you have to be fully self-sufficient. And everything here is first come first serve. But yeah, because it is first come first serve, you can't reserve anything. So you are taking a little bit of a chance by coming up here. But if you can get in, it's really nice. They have a few water spigots around. So if you want to get some fresh water to uh, I don't know, do your dishes. So there's a few of them. They're not super close together though. There's only a couple around the park. 
<laughs> they have little lights going up the steps and then flowers at the bathroom. They're like beautifying the space. We have happened upon another section of the Caribou Wagon Road that was constructed to help get miners and, well, anyone who wanted to go up to the Caribou Gold Rush. And so this is the first, one of the sections that would have carried from Lytton to Clinton and it was uh, about 126 kilometers long so this is part of the hike and we can hike on it now and kind of walk where the miners would have walked at the caribou wagon road portion off of the campground that puts you like right about here in the campground and then so then there's a few trails that go all the way out back down along highway one and then some loops here and then if you go is that east um, east out here there's a lookout as well that's kind of the main activity to do here there's no water access there is some world-class whitewater rafting nearby though so you can always go and check that out as well we're checking out the upper loop trail at ski Hist provincial park the park has over eight kilometers of trails We've all made it up to Goat Bluff, and we're just taking in the view. Benny, are you taking in the view? Really open. I don't know if I want to come out here. Mm -hmm. Like, bring me back into the forest. Huh? There you go. Want some treats? Just be careful up here at Goat's Bluff because there are some really, really steep edges. So, don't get too close. Not even for that perfect Instagram shot. We just got attacked by a grouse. Jeez, that scared me. Well, I had my back turned and you're like, oh my God, oh my God. I'm like, what? I can't see, I gotta turn around. <laughs> We're like showing Benny the birds here in the brush. And this grouse comes flying, like running out of the, out of the brush. But I didn't, I'd never seen one before and I didn't know what the heck it was. And it was coming towards us. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I thought it was like a skunk or something. Makes a weird sound. It's probably, just as startled as we are, because we just scared the crap out of it. Come back so we can film you. All of our Benny walks are on his terms. We will uh, give him the option of getting out to walk. And what do you think, dude? And if he wants to come out, he'll normally come out within a couple seconds of being put down. And it seems like maybe this isn't the right spot. He says, no, I don't want to walk right now. Carry me, human. We're about 10 kilometers up from Ski Hist Provincial Park. And this is Frog Rock. It's a huge rock in the middle of the Nicola River that kind of gives you a depth indicator. It lets you know about how high the river is flowing. It's springtime and it's flowing fairly high right now. So you can see it's quite the torrent. For being a small park, 
of only 50 odd sites. This uh, park feels pretty big actually because there's so much space between all of the sites. It's pretty impressive. You feel like you're really out in the middle of nowhere, out in the woods, so that's really nice. We're all packed up. We're leaving Skihist Provincial Park. We had a really nice time. It's a great spot for, you know, a night or two or even a little bit longer if you want. If you found this video useful, please be sure to give us a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very much. And in the meantime, keep, keep on, on living the life you've, you've imagined. imagined. Uh, there is some first class world, or world first class, <laughs> what is the word I'm trying to say? <laughs> I'm gonna spray it. We're getting a little bit of drizzle. What's that? I mean, this is just a beautiful view and you'd be able to see more if it wasn't cloudy and rainy. Yeah.